this is a look at some free resources for GIMP, in particular some edge masks. This is very much aimed at beginners uh, who want to know how to do a little bit more than just painting and rubbing out. So lots of free resources around, uh, some of them like brushes, patterns, uh, fonts can just get put in a folder and you can use them straight away. But some of them you might have to do a little bit more work uh, to use them. And this is one of them, some free grayscale masks for decorative edge effects. And if we go to this page, we can see what it means by the scrolling down. Um, it means that we get a some sort of patterned edge that fades into the background. Very good for web pages. And if we go up, we can see that uh, if we download these, uh, we do get a, more than a hundred. They come in little zip files, so you do need to know how to unpack a zip. And straight away I can see that uh, there are eight, 800 by 600, 600 by 800. So I know I'm going to have to do a little bit of work with these. Uh, instructions for using them in several different applications. Um, unfortunately, not GIMP. So, looking at what tools we're going to have to use in GIMP. Uh, your GIMP might be slightly different layout from this one, but the two things to identify are the tool options and the layers tab. Find those on your GIMP. Looking at the layers, we've just got the single base layer, the background. So the first thing I need to do is to add our edge mask. And I'm going to go to File, Open as Layers. great thing about GIMP is you can open another image as a layer. And I already have these, or some of them, unpacked. And you can see the little black and white images of different shapes and sizes. And I'm going to use that one. As we said, it's a lot smaller than uh, we need. So looking at it, it appears in the Layers dialog. And I'm going to have to uh, resize this somehow and we use the scale tool. That's that one. Now in clicking on the scale tool, make sure we're on the SC edge layer and click in the image. We get a dialog, but I'm not going to use the dialog. I'm going to use these rectangles on each edge of the layer, which are called handles. So dragging on the handles, click and drag. And somewhere along the line you realise you can't see underneath. So I'm going to use this little arrow here, that one, to drop that SC edge layer down. Click on the arrow and it'll drop that down a level. There it goes. And then I'm going to go to the tool options And scrolling down, find the opacity slider, that one, and reduce the opacity until I can comfortably see both layers. And that uh, value would be around about 20 to 30. Now I can finish off using the handles, click and drag out until I get something that looks about right. That looks good. So I'll bring our scale dialog back in and just click on the scale button and that does its work. Now don't forget to go back Make sure you're on SC Edge and raise it back up again to the top. 
because I want to use this now as a guide for uh, cropping the background layer. And you can see, just to note, that little eye icon will let you view the background layer. But making sure on the background layer, I go to the crop tool, it's that one. And it helps if you've got a steady hand here, but it doesn't really matter. You can drag it out, and as before, we get some handles, and we can drag the crop box around till we're happy with it. And then all you've got to do is hit the Enter key, and it crops it straight away. And you can see here we have the two layers which are more or less the same size. Now then I've got to get this black and white image into the background layer, the base image somehow. And to do this I'm going to use a very powerful tool in GIMP called a mask. And I'm going to add a layer mask. So you go to that menu there, click on add layer mask, and we get this. Can't put people off because there are a lot of options. But if we just look at the first two, the white and the black, and I'm going to use black full transparency. It's that one. Click on the add button. And you can see here we have a new black box next to our base image. Uh, that's the layer mask. If we can click on it, you can see a white border. That means it's active. So you can click on the layer mask or you can click on the adjacent image. Toggle the visibility of SC Edge off and you can see we've lost the image. It's all transparent. That's why we used a black transparency mask. And I can demonstrate this with a white brush. If I paint in the image, remember I'm on the layer mask at the moment. You can see that little white dot there where I've painted. That makes it opaque. Turn black to uh, black ink and it makes it transparent again. And that's the real basics of a layer mask. Um, black is transparent, white is opaque. Now how do we get this black and white image into our layer mask? Well, it's easy. We use just use the copy, making sure we're on the SC Edge layer. Go into the Edit menu and copy it. Make sure you're on the layer mask, and it's got the little white border around it, like that. Now back to the Edit menu, and I'm just going to paste it. So click on Paste. And we get this back to our layers dialog, and we get what's called a floating selection. Hasn't gone straight in. That's because you can delete it if you want to. Don't want to delete it. What I want to do is fix it. So I'm going to use this little anchor icon. It's that one. Click on that, and it copies the SC edge into our layer mask. Now then, if I turn off the FC Edge layer, you can see we do indeed have our base layer with its decorative border and a transparent background. The checker pattern is denotes transparency. Uh, we don't need that one anymore, so I'm going to delete it with that little red cross there. That's uh, that little icon. There, that's gone. Now I've just got our layer mask and our base image. And I can go one step further to the layer menu. Go to the layer menu, that one. Back to the mask. And I'm going to apply the layer mask. Click on that. 
And we're back to the single base image with a border and transparency. And this would go into your web page or a collage. Now that I've made a colour because I'm going to go and add a background layer for this. New layer dialog. I've made that foreground colour so I'm going to use it. Use the foreground colour. And of course it blanks out everything. So dropping it down again, much as we did before, we get a background. I can do a little bit uh, tweaking now because I'm going to use the selection tool and this is a very powerful tool as well in GIMP. Select by colour, all sorts of selection tools but this is select by colour and strangely I'm not going to select a colour, I'm going to select the transparency. Making sure we're on the background and the select by colour tool, click in the transparency and we get that uh, called crawling ants, it's selected all of the transparent bits. Now then a common procedure in GIMP is to invert the selection. You select something you don't want so you can select something that you do want. So I'm going to invert the selection. That means I've selected all of the coloured bit, all of the image in the middle. And I'm going to add a drop shadow to it, straight from the filters, lighting effects menu. You can change the settings in most of the filters. They do often have values you can change. Just play around with them. And that makes a drop shadow. So turning on the background again, it looks like that. And turning off the selection with none. That's what our completed uh, image would look like. Now then, you can uh, right-click on there and flatten the image or merge visible layers, one of the two. Merge is probably the better one. And now you can save this uh, as a PNG, XCF or JPEG.